Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with yet another Bruckner Symphony recording. And it doesn't have horses neighing or people sneering, because it's really quite a good one. It's the fourth symphony in the normal version, the one we should be hearing, <laughs> um, featuring uh, Bernard Heitink. There he is. Bernard Heitink with the Bavarian Radio Symphony Orchestra. Now, this was a recording that was actually made before he died. Um, well, I guess they were all made before he died, right? But but some of them sound like they were made after he died. Now, this one was from 2012. So he was still kind of perky. And it's it's a beautiful performance. It's really better than his Concertgebouw performances. It really is, because um, you have a little bit more more oomph from the horns and a little bit more gravitas from the conductor, but never so much as to interrupt the flow. I mean, let's take it a movement at a time, shall we? The first movement, very, very beautifully done. Flowing, atmospheric, nicely romantic with that misty opening with the horn calls, um, exciting finale, final coda, the climax is nicely done. The chorale thing is, is beautiful, the recapitulation. I mean, it's it's really, really well done. And the second subject, you know, da 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 You know, it doesn't sound stupid, it, and it doesn't bog down. The whole thing flows nicely. It takes almost 20 minutes. I mean, 19 minutes and 51 seconds, but but you'd, you'd never know that it's, it's taking that long. Uh, it cheats the clock really, really well. The Andante, Quasi Allegretto, really is less than 15 minutes. It's wonderful at that speed. This is not an adagio. Yes, it can work that way. It does work that way sometimes. But it's, yeah. It's so much nicer when the melodies flow, particularly this thing, second subject, you know, that viola thing with the pizzicato accompaniment that that seems to go on forever. Really, really effective. Nicely done. I, I'm very, very impressed. I think was at the top of his game. Now, the scherzo is the weakest movement in the batch in this performance, and it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It really isn't. It just could have a little bit more bravura, a little bit more schwung from the brass, you know, from the trombones and but it but da 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 wham but da 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 but da 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 wham but da 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 and and the horns which are going da 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 you know you really want to hear those triplets come out you can hear them unlike so many performances where you never hear them uh at all you just hear string tremolos and timpani rolls no there there is textural differentiation but i still would like to have a little bit more I may be spoiled because, you know, if you've heard Baron Boyman in Chicago do this movement, then you're going to be sort of, everything else seems kind of tame in comparison. It really is. Or the Berm recording with the Vienna Phil, where the horns are the loudest things in the brass section. That's a whole nother way of doing it. And it's marvelous. Then there's the finale. Oh, the finale. 22 minutes and 31 seconds of that fun-filled finale that seems to not know where it wants to go or how it's going to get there, but somehow does anyway. Very, again, very, very nicely done. The big unison theme at the opening, yeah, okay. I want some more trombones and tuba, you know, bomb, 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 wah, you know, and the unison themes and whatnot. Yes, I, I would like to have a little bit more cojones from the brass section. But they're, I mean, they're not bad. Everything sounds the way it's supposed to sound. It's really, really good. And I'm very happy because Heitink recorded everything 30 trillion times and and all of these things seem to be getting released. Whether he wanted them to be or not, they're coming out. And, and he could be extremely persuasive or he could be dull as ditch water. And I'm talking ditch, the ditch, dull, ditch, dull, really dull. And he's not. He's absolutely not here. He's on his game. And the orchestra really responds. It's a beautiful, beautiful performance. Now, there are 30 trillion other Bruckner fours. There are great Bruckner fours. There are better Bruckner fours, I think, in terms of just the orchestral playing, you know, than this one. Uh, and so do you need another Bruckner four? Do you really have to have another Heitink Bruckner four if you already have five or six dozen of them? Well, that's up to you. 
but this is a good recommendation, a safe recommendation. And if you, you know, don't want any of the recommended ones over at classicstoday.com or other places where you find them recommended, you may want to give this a shot. You won't be sorry if you do. That I can assure you. It's, I, I had a very nice time listening to it. And that was good because there's a lot of Bruckner coming and I don't have any patience for the bad stuff, as you well know. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.